Yeah, good morning. Uh, this uh, this week we have a uh, president of SAPA, Sarawak Association of People's Aspiration president, uh, Dominic Ng, our friend Dominic Ng, uh, also a former assemblyman for Padungan. Welcome to Spot On, Dominic. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's a pleasure to be on your program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this week, we would like to ask you about. We have this dilemma, you know, mm. whether to have election this year or when the Dune expire next year in April. So we are facing the devil, the COVID, and deep the deep blue sea. sea. Would you like to share with us your opinion on this? Sure. Actually, yeah. I have been going on the ground recently. And we were distributing face masks, okay? oh. and at the same time uh, we were getting people's input into the uh, preparedness for the election, among other reasons. Mm -hmm. And the answer was a very solid: please, no election now. As okay. of now, for this at, year, or? for this year, at least for not this at year. Least for this year, mm -hmm. the reasons are very simple. Mm -hmm. What happened to Sabah is something that is very scary. Right now, there's five, six hundred cases a day. Yes. You know, they literally exploded yes. thereafter. Mm -hmm. So when I asked them, they said, no, please, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Certainly, I agree that it is the prerogative of the CM of Sarawak exactly, to yeah. set the date. Uh, mm -hmm. This with no qualms. Mm -hmm. It is not for the election commission to tell Sarawak mm -hmm. what, which date to, when, to call, when, when, when to, to call the election. Yeah. But however, caution has to be exercised. We don't want to hold an election in a precipitate manner and then getting everybody under trouble. Say for instance, uh, mm. this is also another presumption. Uh. Yeah. COVID, at the moment, there's no vaccine yet, right? Exactly. I mean, say for instance, next year, so then it spike up again. Even if the two Situation. windows next year, yeah. Mm. There will be another situation if the windows are, uh, say, uh, we wait uh, for for things to slow down. Yeah, yes, better control. Yeah, say January and February, uh, March, mm -hmm. there's a least spike up again. So basically, uh, in your opinion, uh, mm. you are from the civil society, and so how mm. how how then now, you know? Okay. Yeah. That is a very good question. Yeah. Now we know that there are dozens of COVID vaccines that have been tested Correct. worldwide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there are some that are already post. Yeah. Okay? But the latest news, which is already coming on, is from, yeah. from China. Okay? It is only a matter of time that we will get a vaccine uh, that is safe enough to be used for everybody. And China is very confident about it. So even Dr. Fauci, okay, the United States expert on, on uh, COVID now, he said that give us time, okay, the vaccine will be available. So giving them time is actually what we need. While there's a possibility that the spike might come up again in yeah. January or March, the time that we yeah. have these windows, yeah. who knows by that time the vaccine will be available. Mm. Okay, so that is, I think, uh, a pro and con kind of thing. Right. With another two months, now right. it's October, November, December, another right. two months, yeah. the vaccine may be available. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, yeah no. uh, let's move forward to uh, SAPA's advocating that uh, you want to sue the government. Is that, is that how is it? What is it? What's okay. the latest? Yeah. Now, as I have announced, since I think two years back. Yeah. We have already formed a legal team. Okay. Currently the legal team is about seventeen strong. Seventeen lawyers. Seventeen lawyers. Wow. Including my daughters. Oh. Two daughters. Oh. Okay. Both uh, lawyers. Uh one is lawyers, the second one has finished a law oh. and she'll be helping out with the research. We have a lot of senior lawyers, constitutional experts and so on. And even then we are still struggling to get to the bottom of the issue itself. From a first glance, we thought that it's just purely MS63. 
but once you start digging deeper, we okay, just... Okay, okay, yeah. let, let, let me ask. Uh, we have talked so much about this MA63. Yes. What basically is the, is the spirit of it that a lot of people, you know, ordinary lab people do not know about it? Yes. What, what is it? Since we took up this course, yeah. okay, we have yeah. learned a lot more. Yeah. Certainly, when they conceived of Malaysia, Back in 1960s, late 50s yeah, yeah. and 1960s, they were talking about first actually uh, allowing Sarawak and Sabah to become decolonized first. Okay, this was the worldwide. That, 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 that was the spirit of, of what was transpired then. Yes, okay. we are supposed to be decolonized. And then at that time came this Malaysia plan, mm -hmm. uh, evocated by Tunku Abdul Rahman. Now, it is now well known, and we have found out, actually, a lot of Sarawakians were opposed to the idea of the formation of the Federation of Malaysia. Okay? The so-called Cobo Commission report, they, yeah. they went and interviewed 2,000 people in Sarawak, 2,000 people in Sarawak, right. Sabah. Yeah. They came up with a conclusion that was wrong. Okay? It was more like a whitewash. Basically, what was like this, they were saying one third against the idea of formation of Malaysia, mm. one third for the idea of Malaysia, mm. and one third neither here. Actually, it was like this. They mm. were uncertain, they don't know. Mm. But they turned it around and said that that one third, if there are certain, uh, what they call, uh, safeguards, that is not true. Mm. That is not true. So what they turned out was that it was two-thirds in favour of Malaysia when it is nothing is further from the truth. So the problem remains until today. So that basically in your argument yes. is now in void? Lah. It is now in void as far as you are concerned. Mm. Now in void from the beginning at initial or now in void or voidable since then mm. because of the breaches of okay. the agreement. Uh, let, let, let us ask your opinion. Sure. You know, like this is legal. Lah. Ah. What if you can win your case against the federal government? What next then? If we can win and we yeah. can uh, successfully uh, persuade the court mm -hmm. uh, that MA63 is now in void or voidable mm -hmm. and therefore we want it to be voided, mm -hmm. then Malaysia ceases to exist. Oh, Sarawak just... We can but, be free. Sarawak is just... Just exactly. We, we are back to where... I mean, we're not going backwards, no. Yeah. But we are free from what is they call the Federation of Malaysia. If, imagine that. Now, a lot of people, this is what I was trying to tell people. Imagine if the Fed, MS-63 is now in point. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that chaos will... We are you know, just a country, you know? We are a country yeah. on our own. By ourselves. Exactly. And who is going to invade us? People are now using the boogeyman. In, uh, Philippines is going to invade us. Indonesia is going to invade us. Nonsense. You don't, you don't believe that? I don't believe in that. Okay. But we don't have defense. That is the exact thing. You we don't... used to have the Sarawak Rangers. Yeah. We used to have the Sarawak Constabulary. All these things were slowly taken away from us, making us defenseless. However, okay, however, uh, of course, we have been talking about. We have to be practical story. in the sense of suddenly tomorrow, Putrajaya said, hey, Sarawak, you. You can you, go. You, yeah. It's illegal, you know. MS is illegal. We yes. let you go. So, how? Are we going to be able to take care of ourselves? No worries. No worries. Okay. Singapore is much smaller. Brunei is another small territory. They have survived until this day, 56 seven years since then, mm -hmm. okay? They are closest neighbours, okay? Yep. They've survived. Yeah. Uh, I will ask you uh, another related question. Sure. Esperasi also, uh, you know, seeking referendum and also PBK is another party that, you know, go all out for independence. Yes. What's your opinion on this in regards to okay. Sapa's opinion? PBK is advocating a UDI. Mm -hmm. Unilateral Declaration of Independence. Yep. Okay, to some people, they view it as a declaration of war. Okay, it has been done by Kosovo, among others. Okay, but 
It is a very extreme way of doing it. It is one of the ways, but it provokes a lot of acrimony. Uh, it is, in that sense of the word, uh, one of the harsher ways of gaining independence. So that is one thing. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's good or bad, but yeah. it is one way. But it's seen as... That's the PBK way. PBK way, 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 yeah. way yeah. at PBK. the moment. Yes, yes. Uh, the other way is the independence referendum way. Which the Esparasi way. That is also not together Esparasi. with... Uh, mm. Sapa also is advocating that. S4S oh. is advocating that. Okay. Uh, I think a few others are thinking that way. Yeah. The independence referendum is actually one of the legal ways to do it. Okay, now, the independence referendum is internationally recognized. The process is also internationally recognized in the sense that everybody voted for it. Yeah. In the sense that we decide whether the people of Sarawak decide whether or not we want to stay within Malaysia yeah. or become independent. It's just a process. Yes, it's, it's a, a, process. a democratic process. Yeah. And it will easily gain international recognition. I am now advocating an alternative way, which is the way of the confederation. Okay. How does it work? That's the yeah. interesting part. I'm saying that Malaysia, when we formulated the Federation of Malaysia back in those days, we were actually thinking of a confederation. A confederation means that there is a federation of Malaya. Actually, there was a federation of Malaya. Yes. And then there was supposed to be a federation of Sarawak and Sabah because we are together. So, and then Singapore too. So it was actually a coming together of several federations. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what is the nation that is created is actually a more of a confederation. A confederation, in my view, how I perceive it, is just like the European Union, uh, as a simple example. They are all together as a European Union, but yet they exist separately, independent and sovereign countries. Now, we have been sovereign and independent, so it's only a matter of returning to us what belongs to us in the past. So it's not something illegal, it's not something that is what they call seditious. We're not talking about cessation. Uh, that one, I want to emphasize this. Mm -hmm. So, a confederation would mean that the Malaysian entity is still there. But, but, we are free and independent in the sense that we decide what happens to our oil and gas. Everything that belongs to Sarawak will be uh, returned to Sarawak. And we contribute an agreed amount of taxes to, the, to keep the confederation going. That was, I think, the intention of our forefathers, not the other way around. Yes. Okay, yeah. No, uh, finally, yeah. Uh, this question about election coming and people talk about <laughs> possibility of people contesting and so on. Mm. Are you going to contest coming election? I am not going to personally contest, but I'm, we are going to propose my, el my youngest daughter her name is Cherish Ng. She has just graduated from University of Malaya uh, in law. Uh, it is not easy for people to enter politics. And especially when my family, after what is gone through, what I've gone through, a oh. lot of people are very scared. Yeah. Uh, but she is very eager. She has, she's very young, very energetic, full of ideas. So, well, Will come, mm. okay. So she's willing to take up the challenge. Where so, would that be? Uh, well, Batuling Tang, I'm Batu sure. Tang. yes. And then. Uh, so that's the understanding you have made with the uh, DAP, I suppose. Not with the DAP la. The Pakatan, Pakatan Harapan. Harapan yeah. uh, they have each their own seats to mm. to defend. Mm. You know, and so Pikara is uh, asking me. So I said that. Maybe at this time it is not appropriate for me to stand. Okay, and then give the younger generation a chance. But if you have a better chance to win, mm. why not? Mm, then again, Battling Tang or Pedungan. Pedungan was the seat that I won for PKR the first time we broke through. Right, right. We are supposed to be leading the people in terms of change. Change, fresh blood, 
fresh ideas and so on, we should be prepared to start the change within ourselves. We're not going to be talking about 95-year-old old men still asking for a third term as the Prime Minister of Malaysia, okay? As if he is indispensable, he has done too much damage to Malaysia as we know about it. All of these people should be retired. In order to retire them, we ourselves must be prepared to retire ourselves when we, our time has come and allow fresh blood to come into the forefront. Your daughter, you say, just graduated from University of Malaya. How confident would the party or yourself as the father mm. to see your daughter, you know, going through all this campaigning and prevail in the election? Now, every election has its risk, calculated risks and chances. This election is going to be very interesting. Matuling Tang will be at least Minimal five corner fight. Who will be? Uh, the SUPP representing yeah. GPS, yeah. TBK, Bunisha himself has already announced. Yeah. Aspiracy, okay, so has already announced your candidate. Okay. Uh, PSB, I think it's going to be CG Hao. So there's four, five, okay, and PKR. Now, yeah. it is a PKR seat, okay, and we have to defend it. Defend it no matter how difficult the circumstances are. And in that sense of the word, we are confident that the people of Batling Tang will make the right choice. And we're giving them our best choice. Mm. It doesn't have to be me. But I'm telling the people, I'm there. Mm. You vote for Cherish, and you'll be voting for me too. Mm. All right? So last but not least, you yes. have any message to, to your supporters, to SAPA uh, members and yeah. Ah, okay. I am the president of SAPA. I believe in Sarawak. And I believe that Sarawak should be given return whatever that belongs to Sarawakians. Okay? That includes oil and gas. And among others, there are a lot of people who talk about their views and visions about Sarawak. I have no less a grand vision for Sarawak. It is to give us a chance, whether it be through PKR or through SAPA. SAPA is a non-political platform. I will continue, if I'm allowed, to be the president of SAPA and I will be pushing a Sarawak independence the platform as far as I'm allowed to do so. And as I said, that independence do not uh, threaten the existence of the Federation of Malaysia. We're talking about a higher level. It is more acceptable in the sense that people are more comfortable uh, in terms of legal and political consequences. I'm talking about a new vision for Sarawak, which rightfully belongs to us, which legally belongs to us. So there's nothing to fear in what we are pursuing. And to me, Having confidence in our pursuit is very important. That is why I've had this legal team to help us formulate not only just the challenge, not only just the challenge, because there is a political uh, part to it. That change must come not only on the legal side, but there's also a political side. So at the moment, PKR has asked me to go back to PKR. I was in PKR 12 years. I was among my group that actually set up all the branches throughout the whole Sarawak. Okay? So, I know what I'm doing. I'm only asking the chance to let us realise the vision. I do not bother, I do not care whether you are a GPS supporter, you are Aspiracy supporter, you are DAP, you are uh, PKR. We all have one vision. That is the future of Sarawak.